Hey folks, and welcome to yet another episode of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week, and to sharing practical security tips along the way. I'm your all-around security geek and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting September 15th, 2014. This was another week of travel for me, so I had to post this episode late, and it's going to be shorter than usual, but let's jump right in with the first of our three stories, which is more about software updates. Last week was Microsoft in Adobe Patch Day, but this week there's more patches. First of all, Apple released a bunch of security updates. They released some OS X security updates that fixes flaws in Lion, uh, Mountain Lion, and Mavericks versions of OS X. They released Safari updates, Apple TV updates, and of course, uh, Apple iOS 8, the new iOS version, which fixes a lot of security flaws. If you use any of these Apple products, definitely go update, as many of the fixes uh, fix some critical remote code execution flaws. On top of that, last week I talked about Adobe delaying their reader release, and apparently they delayed it due to testing problems. However, they did release it this week, so now there's a reader update which fixes eight security vulnerabilities, including many which are critical code execution flaws. Essentially, if you open a malicious PDF file, someone can take over your computer. So if you use reader, which most people do, definitely update it. Finally, last week I talked about Microsoft Patch Day. They did release many patches for Link Server. Apparently one of the Link Server patches was not good. So you might want to check out Microsoft's latest bulletin updates. They did revoke one of the Link Server patches, although they're sure to update it later. So be sure to get all the updates that apply to you. Moving on to security news, there's a Kindle vulnerability that could hijack your Amazon account. During the week, a researcher posted a blog post highlighting a cross-site scripting vulnerability that affects Kindle. Basically, if someone can get you to open a malicious Kindle ebook, he can take advantage of a cross-site scripting vulnerability in the Kindle library that has to do with the metadata in that ebook. Now, apparently this was a flaw that Amazon fixed before, because this researcher told them about it before, but it's been reintroduced. So the researcher decided to do a public blog post where he outlines this cross-site scripting flaw, including sharing proof of concept code. So be careful if you open any sort of pirated or third-party Kindle Amazon books. And by the way, it also illustrates how uh, serious cross-site scripting vulnerabilities are. Many web developers don't think cross-site scripting is a dig big deal, but bad guys can use these flaws to hijack your accounts. They can gain access to Amazon with your credentials and have full access to your Amazon account. Some cross-site scripting flaws can be even exploited to execute code on the local client machine or gain control of the browser. So it's very very critical that web developers create secure web applications. And if you are a web developer, one place to learn about secure web development is OWASP.org, the Open Web Application Security Project. So be sure to visit it. Now the good news is shortly after the researcher blogged about this, Amazon did fix it. So if you are a Kindle user, you should be safe today. But you should still be careful where you get your Kindle eBooks. So I'll finish with a kind of fun and yet still serious story that combines two of my favorite topics, security and video gaming. During the week, uh, at a London security conference called 44Con, a researcher released details on hijacking the Canon Pixma printers. Essentially, he showed a vulnerability in the web interface that's built into all these Canon Pixma printers. He's able to take advantage of the flaw in the web interface to load up unsigned code. And to demonstrate his vulnerability, he actually did something Fun. He loaded the Doom, the classic Doom first-person shooter game, onto a Canon printer and actually played it on the little LED screen on the printer. Now, as fun as this sounds, printer vulnerabilities are a big deal. Printers are essentially embedded computers. Many have hard drives and a significant amount of memory, and they live on your trusted network. So they become a great access point for attackers to launch attacks on your internal network. A bad guy can take over your printer, use it as a resource to infect everybody else. On top 
top of that, you print out a lot of sensitive corporate documents on your printer. So if he has access to your printer queue, he can get access to all these documents as well. So despite this being kind of a funny hack running Doom on a printer, it has many serious connotations that are, are really what the hacks against Internet of Things are all about. So if you're a Canon person, be sure to pay attention to updates to the Canon Pixma drivers that will fix this vulnerability. So that's it for this week's quick episode, but there were a ton of other security stories I just don't have time to cover. So be sure to visit the WatchGuard Security Center blog where the video post for this will have a reference section with links to all kinds of other interesting stories. On top of that, I really recommend you subscribe to this blog to get all the security information that WatchGuard delivers. You can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you. Thank <laughs> you.